Two Billy DVD reviews. Wishing you a happy October. 14 more days so Halloween. Fucking silver shamrock. As usual, it's October. We're only going to be reviewing horror movies. Today we got the review of the Blu-ray of... Jennifer's Body! Ooh. Story of Jennifer's Body revolves around these two best friends, high school girls. One played by Megan Fox, she plays Jennifer. The other one, named Needy, that's her nickname, uh, played by Amanda Seyfried. Uh, basically what happens is the movie starts out, Amanda Seyfried plays the, like, the nerdy girl, Megan Fox plays the hot cheerleader, somehow they're best friends. They're going to go see an emo band at the local shitty watering hole. Fucking Megan Fox plays a big time slut in this, probably sucking the whole town's dicks. Basically she goes there, she wants to bang the whole band and all this shit. What happens is she comes up there, she buys shots for the bands and shit, they're eyeing her, they're going to bang her right up to the show. But Amanda Seyfried hears them over talking about how slutty she is and shit like that, so she walks up and she says, hey you dicks, my friend wouldn't do anything with you and shit, she's actually a virgin. Fucking big time lie, fucking of course Megan Fox fucking everybody. But this is an important plot point that this band thinks she's a virgin, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Basically the band starts playing... Like, real pussy-ass emo fucking bullshit rock. They're not, like, trying to pass it off like it's cool or anything. This movie actually makes fun of emo motherfuckers, so I actually give them some credit for that. Actually, uh, the best part of the band is uh, Adam Brody. Is that his fucking name? Yeah, Adam Brody plays the fucking lead singer. He's got guy liner on and shit. He's acting all corny. He's actually really one of the best things about this movie. Anyway, they start playing. Fire breaks out. Everybody runs out. The whole fucking place catches on fire. Fucking motherfuckers running out, jumping out windows and shit. Big flaming logs, fucking falling on people, killing people. This movie has like a real bizarre kind of nightmarish, fucking cartoonish, you know, satirical, surreal tone to it. So this is actually one of the coolest scenes of the movie. So right away you think, oh man, this movie's gonna be awesome. Of course, the man of Seafood is like all fucking freaked out. She wants to go home. Fucking Megan Fox still on a mission to get that dick. She jumps into the van with the band. They drug and drive away. Cut to like six hours later. Amanda Seyfried sitting at home, all traumatized. She watched all these people die. Next thing you know, Megan Fox come knocking on the door, but she's all bloody and looks like she's been stabbed a bunch of times. But she's alive, and she starts eating all this fucking food, and then she pukes it up on the fucking floor and shit. And then, I don't even know why, but the puke starts, like, dancing around, like little, I don't know, spines and shits are coming out of it. So right there, you would think that Amanda Seyfried would know something's goofy going on, but she suspends her disbelief, just wants to, you know, be happy that her best friend's still alive. Next thing you know... Fucking everybody goes back to school, everybody's mourning the fucking tragic loss, everybody died on fire. And I gotta say, for people who are fans of Heathers, this movie really, I would go as far to say just rips off fucking Heathers. Diablo Cody, she wrote Juno, she's so original. Well, actually, she's really fucking not. If you remember in Heathers, the big thing was teen suicide, everybody was getting fake serious and stuff at that school, you know, getting all sanctimonious about it and stuff. Well, it's the same thing here. The more people die throughout this more movie, the more the fucking community comes together and has all these fake vigils. Next thing you know, fucking Megan Fox, she starts luring boys into the woods, saying she's gonna fuck them and shit. Getting ready, pulling down her shirt, just about ready. When you see her tits, she fucking turns into a demon. Like, just like a CGI mouth jumps on these motherfuckers. And I gotta be honest, they really don't fucking show shit. And then the big nudity part of the movie, and granted, this is an R-rated movie, but the big nudity movie, we see Megan Fox's back. Ooh, so fucking, uh... Fucking cock tease, fake slut. So as the movie goes on, Amanda Seyfried's character, she finds out that Jennifer is, her best friend is a fucking, like, I don't know, fucking demon, I guess. Turns out the fucking band tried to sacrifice her so that he could go on and have, like, big career and shit, sacrifice her to the devil. But you needed it in order to work, you needed the fucking girl to be a virgin. Megan Fox, obviously not a virgin. She's obviously fucking getting banged by anything with a pecker in a three mile radius. So the thing went wrong. The band. They actually did get popular just because of the fire and shit catapulted them to success. But, you know, fucking Megan Fox didn't stay there. She came back. And she actually, because of this ceremony or whatever, and she wasn't a virgin, actually a demon jumped into her body. So she's kind of half Jennifer, half demon, whatever. She transforms. Basically, after a few weeks of not eating a new guy, she starts getting all pale and nasty and shit. Basically, the way Megan Fox kind of really looks like in real life. But, you know, whatever. So she has to keep eating motherfuckers to stay young, stay beautiful. And basically what it comes down to, old cliche bullshit, is the fucking senior prom or where the fuck it was supposed to be, some corny dance. She has to end up going after fucking the man of Seafree's boyfriend and then they have a showdown and we're not friends anymore. I knew you was a demon and you was eating fucking Johnny Come Lately and whatever, but it's not cool anymore that you're trying to eat my fucking boyfriend. So they fight and stuff. And, you know, don't want to spoil it to it, but, you know, twist turns and shit at the end. My problem with this movie, a lot of people say, oh, Diablo Cody, fuck Diablo. 
Gal Cody is not the problem in this fucking movie. Her writing is not the problem. The fucking director, Karen Kawasama, she's a fucking problem. Because the problem is this movie just pusses out. It's like they got the high school dialogue down and snap. And it ain't the real corny like Juno, like fake dialogue. It's very stylized and poppy, but it sounds a lot like how they talked in Heathers. It's not really like that real goofy, over-the-top Ellen Page Juno dialogue. It's pretty fucking funny. The girls always fucking calling each other dirty fucking tuna sluts and shit like that. But it just really misses out on the horror. When Megan Fox like eats these boys and shit, fucking, you know, her mouth just opens up, she got some fake teeth, she jumps on them, and then we always cut to a wall and some blood spraying. I'm sorry, but that just shit is not getting it done in this day and age. We can do so much special effects, ripping motherfuckers apart, doing shit, and no, you really don't get none of that in this movie. Jennifer's body, I want to like it. I actually really do like parts of it, but the horror aspect, the monster aspect, you know, the demonic forces aspect, it really fucking didn't deliver. And on top of it, without spoiling too much, there is a scene that plays over like the end credits, like filmed with a camcorder and shit, that really should have been the natural, dramatic conclusion to the movie, like kind of like a revenge type thing. But they don't really show shit, they just shoot it as cheap fucking handheld thing. It had the premise, it had the steam, it had the fucking... I think good writing. I had a fucking good cast going into it, but then fucking somebody lost their fucking heart on. So, as a movie, I can only give Jennifer's Body a 6 out of 10. It has the framework, it has the base work for a fucking good movie, but it just, they don't really go anywhere with it. Picture and sound, this being a blur ray, of course it's gonna look pretty damn fucking good, and it does. The movie was shot with really bright colors, lots of kind of pastel, you know, really fucking vibrant teen colors, I guess. And it comes through pretty fucking good, really. My only complaint is there's like a bunch of day for night fucking scenes. And, he, and fuck, if we didn't learn with fucking Night of Living Dead 1990, day for night, it just always looks fake and artificial. But hey, that's the director's intention. That's how they produce the scenes. I can't blame the Blu-ray. But if it wasn't for the day for night shit, the nighttime scenes probably would look a little more natural. Probably a little look more crisp. But overall, it's a pretty good fucking presentation of, you know, a pop teen movie. As usual, we got DTS HD Master Audio. That shit was real nice. Spooky, lots of atmospheric shit around in the woods and stuff. Picture and sound, I'm going to give it a good solid 7.5 out of 10. Maybe not demo material, but very solid, good quality Blu-ray. When it comes to special features, shit is jam-packed, special edition, whatever. It actually, the movie has two cuts of it on here. It has the unrated extended director's cut, and it has the theatrical cut. Now these different versions, they're pretty similar, just a few little scenes are shifted around, extended and stuff. But the thing that's cool is they have a commentary on the theatrical with Diablo Cody and the director. And then on extended, they have another commentary with the director. So commentary out there, ass of commentary is your fucking thing. We also got some deleted scenes. We got Jennifer's Body, The Deadpool, which is like a 14 minute documentary about the pool scene in the movie. That's kind of like the action climax of the movie. I don't know, this shit got kind of boring to me. They're just showing this dirty old nasty pool they filmed in the... But to them, like, they, they thought they built, like, a fucking, like, a Star Wars cruiser or some shit. Like, they were so impressed with this fake fucking phony pool that they bought. But the best part about that is they actually go back and they talk to uh, Greg Nicotero can be of the original designs that was going to happen to Megan Fox for transformations and shit. And... This shit was awesome. I mean, for if the, I'm telling you, if there's a different director of this movie, it would have chosen these designs. They're much scarier. Her whole fucking jaw split off. It was more like a snake mouth with these jagged teeth and shit. And her skin ripped off. It just was scary. And her, her skin got more discolored. And I don't know. Fuck it. It was awesome design, man, just to go on using the movie. But even the director goes on her and says she thought it was too gross, too whatever. They scaled it back, make sure it still looks like Megan Fox because she's so hot. The teeth they did go with in the movie, you basically just Megan Fox with some teeth in her mouth or whatever. That shit wasn't sexy either, so f come on, get some fucking balls. Get a get a monster in your goddamn monster movie, come on. To have some production diaries, video diaries, this is bullshit, man. About 20, not even 20 minutes, about 15 minutes. Fuckers running around home video cameras playing grab us on a set joking around. You ain't gonna learn nothing about this movie from that. Except that everybody who made it was a fucking jackass, but whatever. They get a gag reel, and on the back it says Megan Fox Extras. These Megan Fox Extras are bullshit, man. There was one I was clicking through the menu and said Megan Fox is hot. I'm like, what the fuck is it? Click it on, it's like 55 seconds of just shots of the movie of Megan Fox. Like, not even like sexy shots, like whatever. Just her just saying lines from the movie, just random shit. I don't know, man. Like, whoever fucking was doing this fucking blur raid, they really were like going like, let's just put as much trash on here as we can. So, special features, they definitely want with quantity over quality, so I'm sorry, special features, I can only give it 5.5 out of 10. I mean, a lot of shit on there, but uh, not a lot of it was really good to watch. 
Make sure you stay pumped up for Halloween. You know, every year Halloween, we got to try to get in the spirit and shit. Pull your favorite movies off the shelf. Dress up. Fucking, I don't know, fucking murder that asshole kid that lives down the street from you. Do something just scary, spooky, evil to enjoy this fucking pagan ass holiday. 14 more days to Halloween. Fucking silver shamrock.